Welcome back to Your Legislation. We're here with Randy Fry again. It's great to have you back. Hi, Deb. Thanks for having me again. You're welcome. This, this is wonderful. You're really doing a lot. I enjoy it. Well, it helps us understand how the process works, so then it's a little easier to accept if things work or don't work the way we want them to. I think so. you're about to get a real education here in the next couple of minutes about <laughs> yeah. the last couple of weeks of session. So. Yeah, so this is kind of great. Yeah. One of our questions was, some of the bills have already been through the House and the Senate, right. and they're being switched over. Uh -huh. Now, what happens when those bills don't go where we think they're supposed to? Well, first off, Debbie, there's several things that can happen here in the last two weeks. Session will uh, enter the third phase uh, called Conference Committee starting on Wednesday. And so we got a lot of work to do between now and then. But uh, what happens is uh, a bill that passed the House and the Senate with no amendments in the second house, in the Senate, for instance, can now go to the governor for his signature. And, and that's awesome. And, and we've had, uh, I've had a bill that, that did that. Um, now, there are also uh, bills that will uh, be amended in the second house. In our case, if it started in the house, it was amended in the Senate. Same thing if it started in the Senate and got amended in the house. Now it has to go to conference committee. And that in that format, you can, you, the author of the bill, can say, I like what the Senate did to my bill, it made it better. Uh, and so that's called a concurrence. The Senator could do the same thing to a bill that was amended in the House. I like what they did, or I can at least tolerate what they did. And so you concur. And what happens then is that bill where it started has to come back to the floor and be voted on again. Right. Uh, because it has to go to the governor in identical form, it passed both chambers. And so that's the easiest thing that'll happen in the next few days, other than the bills that have already gone to the governor, who, which were not amended. But maybe you say, well, I really don't like what happened to my bill, uh, and so I'm going to dissent. I'm, instead of concur, I'm going to dissent. And dissent means I'm taking it to a conference committee. Members of a conference committee, it's a real committee, just like a, a regular committee through the session, but it's a special committee, and the members are assigned both by the House Republicans and Democrats and the Senate Republicans and Democrats. And then the bill uh, would go into a committee setting. Now, usually, not always, but usually the author of the bill is the committee chairman. And uh, so uh, a committee report is developed, and, and uh, the author can do it, or, or several people can have a committee report. And, uh, and so that committee report is then brought to the committee. Sometimes there's testimony taken. Other times it's simply to advise the members of the committee, this is what I think, what do you think? And, uh, and then the conference committee report must go to the four caucuses, House uh, uh, Republicans and Democrats, Senate Republicans and Democrats, and they all have to sign off. And so uh, if your bill, for instance, is controversial, you may not get four signatures. Uh, and, and so now you have to figure out, what do I do? Do I change the bill? Do I take out whatever's the, uh, the issue that's causing someone not to want to sign? Uh, what is it that I need to do? And this is where a lot of bills die uh, because you simply can't get it to where all four caucuses will sign up. Um, so that, that's a big part of conference committee. Um, and then, Debbie, there's another factor here. So we've got quite a few bills uh, ready to go uh, on Monday and Tuesday. Um, tu Tuesday is the second reading deadline. That's where bills are amended, and Wednesday is the third reading deadline. And so let's say, for instance, your bill simply didn't make it. Uh, it passed the first half, and when it went to the Senate, it didn't get a hearing, or for whatever reason, it did not pass the Senate. A Senate bill the same way. It passed the Senate in the first half, came to the House, and it did not pass. Those bills are now eligible to be amended into another bill. Now, you were telling me earlier that when they're amended into another bill, they can only go into certain bills that are... A germane bill. Yes. And Debbie germane means that it's the same topic. So you would not want to amend, for instance, a public safety bill into an education bill. It would be called non-germane and, and it would not be allowed to happen. And so right now, authors of bills that did not get a hearing in the second half are looking for another bill that they can inject their bill into in conference committee. And so we're, we're debating on whether we want to keep the language that was put in in the second house and also whether we're going to add language 
but that has passed one house or the other. Now that language is only eligible for conference committee if it did pass one house. And so bills that didn't get a hearing in either house are, are pretty much dead. Um, so that's the process and that's the next two weeks. Uh, we will be uh, in the house floor for a few minutes and back out. And what's happening is those people who are having conference committee hearings, then they're going to take those conference committee reports and try to get the signatures on them. But they can't get a signature on it until caucus is held. Well, caucus doesn't go on 24 hours a day, so you've got to wait until the next caucus. You might be ready to sign at 9 a.m., but caucus may not happen until 1. And so by 1, caucus is over by 2 or 3, then it has to go through the process. So, so time begins to be a huge factor and you may not make it across the finish line. So you might have worked all this time to get your bill to this point and lose it because simply the clock ran out. And it does happen. Well, you have so many bills that go through, it's hard to make it, it is. all of them to make it. Well, and, and for sure, every author, myself included, are watching our own bills. I want my bills to get through and go to the governor. Uh, I want the bills that were sent to me by a senator, meaning I would be the House sponsor. I want them to go to the governor. And of course, other bills that I am very passionate about. So everybody's like that. And so the hallway is just buzzing with legislators running one direction and the other, and they're trying to get this, this legislator, let me put this in your bill, or let me put that in, in that bill. And, uh, and sometimes you do, but you can't get a conference committee signature because there was a reason that bill didn't get a hearing in the second house. Uh, there's somebody didn't like it, and that they've got enough uh, enough authority or enough influence, I guess I would should say, in that in that caucus, you won't get the signature. So an awful lot is happening here in the next couple of weeks. Oh wow. And how many weeks are left in? Well there's this two. Session? There's actually two and I don't think there'll be full weeks. Um, next week will be a full week. Um, but the week after we'll probably be done on Tuesday at the latest Wednesday. Um, so again the clock is running and uh, I know oh, wow. the speaker's already told us you better be getting those signatures, meaning if your bill is highly controversial, you better amend it down or pull it down to where you can get your signatures or you're going to lose your bill. And, and that happens again. Uh, I've lost bills during conference committee. just couldn't get a signature on them. So, um, but that's part of the process. It is. And that keeps uh, legislation from passing. It probably shouldn't. So in the next eight days, we're, <laughs> we're going to see a lot happen, aren't we? Uh, so uh, we talked earlier this year, but two halves don't make a hole in the General Assembly. Right. The first half is the... House hears their own bills, Senate hears their own bills, second half we switch, but the third phase is called conference committee and it's it's sort of helter skelter. <laughs> <laughs> well that keeps you on your toes, it'll keeps keep, your mind it keep, it does keeps that. Your mind sharp. <laughs> it'll make you tired too. <laughs> it will. So now Senate Bill twenty five yeah. mm -hmm. is for police officers and firefighters. firefighters. What's it, that gonna do for well, them? You know, Debbie, we work on a lot of bills. Uh, some of them, you, your your viewers probably think, well, I don't know, do we really need to do that? And sometimes I think that too. This is not one of those bills. Senate Bill 25 is a bill that uh, went through a summer study committee. It's called PMOC, a Pension Management Oversight Committee. And uh, they are a committee that comes together every summer to look at the health of the firefighter and the police officer pensions. And in this particular case, they're uh, looking into what happens when someone, uh, as a result of the job, on uh, line of duty, uh, becomes mentally ill. In most cases, we're talking about PTSD. Right. Uh, and, and most of your viewers understand what that is. Uh, so when we're uh, talking about that today and someone um, makes it known that they're ill, they can then go before the pension board and uh, if they are found to be ill, then they would go on pension. But there's really no mechanism for them to come back to work. There's also not really a mechanism for them to get help as far as paying for it. And so Senate Bill 25 really changes the game. <clears throat> and, uh, and what it does is Senate Bill 25 sets up a three-member panel. And each individual who comes to their employer and says, listen, listen I really, I feel like I need some help. Right. Uh, I'm having a hard time. And so then that individual would go before this panel. Now the panel has a psychologist, has a physician, and either a firefighter or a police officer, depending on whether you're a firefighter or a police officer. And you would be interviewed. At that point, if it's deemed, yeah, you need help, you would then be put on your pension, but 
you would also have provided for you at the employer's expense treatment, health care options to help you get better. And over a two year period of time, you'll be on pension and you'll be receiving treatment. At the end of that two years, you're reevaluated by this three member board. And if they say, well, uh, this individual is now good to go, you can go back to work. Most police officers, firefighters that I know, they don't want to be off. Uh, the problem we used to have was getting them to be off when they should have been off, not, not getting them not to. <clears throat> and so these folks will, will have an opportunity to return to the career that they love. But let's say, for instance, they're just not ready. They're still not over it. Then they'll have another two years of their health care paid for for their uh, when, for this, their treatment. For this disorder, right? right? Mental health treatment. And then in two years, they'll be reevaluated again. If they're if they're healthy enough to go back to work, they can go back to work. Right. Uh, if they can, if they're not, yes. they'll be on pension the rest of their life. So it gives you two two-year cycles to get healthy. And we know people can get healthy. People can get past it. It's, it's uh, very difficult. And I will tell you, Debbie, that a lot of this uh, stems from the attitude in public safety. And I think you were a dispatcher. You're pretty familiar with that attitude. Yeah. It's a macho attitude. Um, much of what we did, we you and I talked about a bill we had a, a couple weeks ago that uh, establishes best practices for firefighters to try to figure out why we're getting sick and to help not happen. Well, this is all a part of that same thing. It's that persona, it's that, that um, image that we project. Right. <clears throat> Years ago, before I became a firefighter, there was a term called leather lung. That was an individual who wouldn't wear an air pack in a fire. And they were seen as heroes. They didn't need no air pack. I'm tough. Well, in reality, that they were making themselves sick. Yes. They were going to get cancer. They were going to get uh, heart disease. Later on, we all got air packs, and now nobody goes anywhere without an air pack in a hazardous environment. Years ago, when I was on, we wouldn't wash our fire gear. The dirtier the gear, the badge of honor. I sought more action than you did. That's why my gear is so bad. My helmet was filthy. I wanted it that way. It said, that guy there, he's been around. He's somebody to be respected. It was terrible. We were making ourselves sick. With this kind of thing, with PTSD, it has been, in, for many years, the persona is, I'm weak if I admit that I have an issue. Right. Now, this is real, and I'll tell you how I know. I had two firefighters that worked with me in my career commit suicide. And you had no idea they were dealing with anything. I didn't. Um, the, the young lady who committed suicide, I, I thought she was happy. She was fun to be around, did her job, was never an issue. I was shocked when I found out that she had killed herself. Young man, young guy, had a young son, under 10 years old, uh, great athlete, former military, and uh, I, I love the guy. Uh, and we played basketball together a few days before he, he committed suicide. I went to a Pacer game with him a few days before that, and uh, he and his son and I had a blast. Come in a few days later and here he had shot himself. Um, it's real. <clears throat> and we got to get over this persona that you're weak if you admit that you need some help. So what Senate Bill 25 is going to do is it's going to provide you not only an opportunity to get help and get that help paid for, but to return to the career you love. Right. I think that's important because <clears throat> if you have an issue with your your strained a knee or you've hurt your ankle, you're going to go to the doctor. Mm -hmm. This is no different. It, it isn't. And, um, you know, rarely does someone take their own life from a knee injury but people are taking their own life from, from these this PTSD. It's real. It's it's going to be a, a game changer, I think. I think so, and um, everyone's on board with this, um, from the from the pension board to the fire departments, the police departments, uh, all the organizations, the FOP, professional firefighters, they're all on board with this because everyone understands that we have to do something to help our people. Frankly, Debbie, you're dealing with some pretty awful things, and sometimes you just can't you just can't get it off you, uh, and so this is really going to be a, a game changer. Yeah, when when they see things that are not normal, and and find people in in the condition they find them in mm -hmm. that is is not normal, right? It can do things to you. It create. can, and uh, I'm not sure why, but uh, some days you can take it better than other days. Some days you're more susceptible. I can tell you runs that I've had that uh, really bothered me. They still bother me. Uh, usually it's because the, there was something that I related to. The child that was injured, same age as mine. 
looked like my child or looked like my mom maybe right. uh, or reminded me of somebody like that so some some days you can take things and some days you you need a little help and it, i think it's good that they know that it's that it's out there it's provided for them it is hopefully they'll access it well i think so because uh, once it's um, known that they need help the help's available yeah yeah. Well, now we're going to move on to House Bill 1095, and mm. it does some pretty special things. Mm. And it's not a public safety bill. Imagine that. Right. Um, <laughs> For you, that is Yeah, unusual. that is. Um, and uh, I'm sure your listeners know by now if they've been listening, but I, I chair the Veterans Affairs and Public Safety Committee, and so vast majority of legislation that I actually work on personally are public safety or military issues. But in this case, this is a, a transportation bill. I am on the Roads and Transportation Committee as well. And House Bill uh, 1095, what it does is it changes how NDOT, which is uh, the Indiana Department of Transportation, mm -hmm. um, and what it does is it allows them to streamline the process of an emergency repair. Now, anybody who lives around here knows if the road's close to a creek or, or a river or the Ohio River that we're going to have slides. Um, the topography here is just, uh, it's going to happen. And so what we needed to do was streamline the process of emergency repairs. Uh, the old process was cumbersome, took a long time, but frankly, uh, a few years ago, we didn't have the money that we have today to fix our roads. And so even though it was cumbersome and slow, it's going to take a while to get the money anyway. Uh, today, that's not the case. Today, we can really uh, accelerate things. So uh, House Bill 1095 is simply going to make the process much more streamlined, much better for uh, Indiana Department of Transportation to uh, get a quote and get the work done and get that road uh, back in a, a shape where uh, our citizens are not put at, uh, in danger. Well, this makes the process so much faster. It's hopefully going to benefit especially the drivers. You know, you go across a, a bridge or a, right. a major roadway that you have to access to go to work and things right. instead of doing a detour for so long. And it's expensive. It. Uh, even for schools, it's expensive if the bus has to go around. Or uh, it's expensive for companies that have trucks that have to go a longer route. So, and it's an inconvenience, as you said, if you're driving back and forth to work and you got to go a different way, that's, uh, that's not fun. So uh, I'm, I'm delighted that that bill has passed and uh, it's over in the Senate right now. I assume it'll be all right. I, I'm, I'm sure it will. And uh, I look forward to the governor signing that dude and let's, uh, let's start fixing our roads quicker. I think that's great. It'll, it'll definitely make a difference. Yeah, make well. it easier on NDOT too. Yeah. <laughs> well, they, they get a lot of phone calls. This might They do, something. but they have a tough job too. They NDOT, NDOT is uh, in a very tough spot. You know, Debbie, um, talking about NDOT, um, just about everybody in the state of Indiana touches NDOT every day. Unless you're uh, just not ever in your car for some reason or another, you're touching NDOT every day. You might hit the BMV once a year. You might uh, hit a count state park two or three times a year. Uh, you might hopefully never come in contact with uh, corrections or something like that, but you touch NDOT every day. And so if NDOT doesn't get 100% every day, we, we know it. And uh, so this is just going to be one of those tools that help them do their job and, and helps us all have a better quality of life, which is what we should be about. So uh, this week y'all are going to be at the State House but you're going to be here in 49 different bills in two days in two days well yeah yeah, yeah. so uh, there's 14 bills up on uh, on monday for third reading and uh, and then there's a, a whole bunch of bills that are up for uh, second reading on monday and then those bills the third uh, second reading bills on monday will all be on third reading on tuesday if they don't pass by tuesday then they cannot move forward in their current form right but they could be as i mentioned earlier amended into another bill so uh, don't close your eyes if you're watching one of them. They right. can show up someplace else. But and those amendments will have to be done. You'll have six days. That's right. Five and to six days well, left after you, that. You do, Debbie, and you can even count the weekends if you want to, but until you can meet with your caucuses, all four of them, right. and get those signatures, it doesn't matter whether you actually have a bill that you could get the signatures on. So uh, those bills have to go through those caucuses for signature. The other thing that I didn't mention before is after that, they have to go before the Rules Committee. The Rules Committee has to approve it. Well, the Rules Committee has to meet. They don't meet continuously. So even after you have your signatures, they have to go back to the House floor, be assigned to Rules Committee. Rules has to meet, pass them back to the House floor before they can be voted on both in the House and the Senate. And that's also the Senate Rules Committee has to meet. So the process can really get crazy. And you're just running up and down the stairs or running across the building, back and forth to the Senate. 
Um, and the, it, it's sort of like uh, being down a few points at the end of a game and the <laughs> clock's running and you're just trying everything you can to make it up before the clock runs out and, and you end up on a short end. Oh my gosh. It, it, I don't want to be there this week. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to be there, but uh, but uh, I'm, I'm in a good position with the bills that I have. I've got one that's already gone to the governor for his signature. I've got two more that are coming back from the Senate uh, that I'm going to concur on. So they don't have to go to rules. They don't have to. Uh, they don't have to go, go uh, straight to the governor to, to, for conference committee. They'll come back to the house. They'll be voted on in the house, and then they can go on to the governor. Right. So um, I don't really have anything I think is going to conference committee where I'll get into that. Uh, need those signatures. I, I'm wow. going to avoid that this year. So if people are visiting the state house this week, <laughs> they need to just kind of stay out of the way, <laughs> <laughs> well, just step to the side. <laughs> you know, and it's very common. We have a lot of visitors. We love to see our visitors. Our farm bureau comes to see us all the time. But uh, I will say that if you're looking for a legislator to hang out with this week, you probably won't find them because yes. they're they're going to be running up and down the stairs as fast, about as fast as their legs will go. There will be short lunches or no lunches. No this lunch next is week. what happens. <laughs> you eat at your desk while you're uh, continuing to work. Oh my gosh! Well, it, now there's a website they can go to. They can, and they need to go there to watch the bills or to keep track right. of what's going on and to watch the meetings. They can. Uh, Deb, you can go to the Indiana General Assembly webpage, and uh, if you want to watch the House proceedings or the Senate proceedings, you just click on that. Uh, however, if you want to see what happened in a committee, uh, you can go to that committee, and when you click on that committee, there's a camera there. Uh, you'll click on the day that you wanted to watch, and then you click on the camera, and then you can watch and listen to the proceedings in that committee. So uh, it's there forever. It's archived, and it's there for a reason. A lot of folks can't watch while we're there. They're at their own jobs. They're having yeah. their own life or doing whatever. But that evening or another day, they can watch. Now, with all that, if there's a bill coming up and they have an idea or a suggestion on that bill, how can they take care of that? What do they need to do? Well, right now it's probably too late for this year. Uh, no new language can go into a bill now. Uh, they're already out. Right. On, uh, so anything that's passed one house or the other is still alive, but anything else is, would have to wait. However, that's not to say that you can't get in touch with me or, or my colleagues and, and let them know that you have this concern or, or this uh, thing you believe needs to be addressed. Uh, certainly look into it, and as uh, soon as session's over, we'll begin working on things like that all, all summer and getting ready for next year and uh, the fall. Now, so. next year is a different type of session. You, yeah, it is. You next year will be a long session. This year's a short session. Mm -hmm. Next year's a long session, which is a budget session. And... Uh, the, the state budget is a two-year budget, and currently it's $34 billion. Oh, wow. $34 billion. That's a lot of money, even in, uh, in anybody's checkbook. That's a lot of money. So um, we'll be working on that budget next year, and, uh, and then we'll be there through April. It takes a lot longer to uh, get the budget done, as it should. Well, yeah. It's not as stressful, I don't think, as this is, you know, all these well, bills going It very through. much is in is the it? last two weeks of session. It's just like this, only uh, it's, it's two months um, per half yes. instead of one month per half. Oh, so, so you have, so, ooh. So it's a, yeah. <laughs> there's even more bills flying around and, and a lot more to do, and even uh, the time frame's the same. So uh, it, it gets really crazy <laughs> even next year. Well, you have, a, you have a few months to deal with that one. <laughs> we do. It's been, been good. Now, do we have anything else we want to let people know before we have you? Well, I think um, by, the, by next week, right. if uh, you're kind enough to have me back next week, we'll yes, really be able, to be able to give you an update about what is left and what's happening and right. what's finished up by then. Maybe uh, my bills uh, that uh, are uh, going to be concurred on will be on their way to the governor and we can report that. That'll be great. Well, thanks again for coming in. Thanks it, for having me. I mean, there's so much stuff you tell us we don't realize goes on behind the scenes. Well, it does. And that te that explains why it takes so long to do something. It, it, it should, Debbie. Um, it, I mean, it, sometimes it's frustrating that General Assembly operates pretty slow. But frankly, I think uh, we have to operate slow. Uh, if we went fast, we'd probably mess up more than we fix. Well, you might miss some things that well, you... Well, that's, that's it right there. You're finding out now because someone has an idea and they're like, well, this would work better if we did this and this is because of this. Well, you've heard of a so. term, unintended consequences. Mm -hmm. well, the unintended consequences of legislation is what keeps us up at night. So you believe that you're fixing something based on what we're doing and then it passes and then you find out, uh-oh, we fixed that, but we broke something we didn't even think about. That's the unintended consequences. When you move quickly, the chances of unintended consequences go way up. 
So uh, that's uh, a serious concern and something that uh, we're always mindful of and try to try to avoid. Well, that gives you time, though, to talk to everybody that's involved in that in that bill, how it's going to affect everybody in there. I mean, so. I mean, that's the importance of the committee process is you get everyone from residents uh, back at home to experts to uh, people that are there representing uh, clients to other legislators to testify and give their uh, their opinions and facts on, on issues. That's why it's so important to be able to go through committee before it gets out on the House floor or Senate floor uh, before uh, it has to be uh, examined in great detail before it's allowed to move forward and uh, because this becomes a law it becomes a code of the land and once it is you're gonna live with it so it's best to just make sure it's right go slow or as right as possible do do your due diligence go slow and get it right the first time oh this is great well thanks so much for being thanks with for us again I, we really i really appreciate it oh, so. me too and as always, we appreciate our sponsors for making all this possible, and we thank you for watching. It's time to shake things up at breakfast. Sure, you could have the same old, same old, or you could bite into the Chicken McGriddles or the McChicken Biscuit. Get both for just three bucks and add any size Coke for a dollar.